At Fancy Fast Food, we usually take ordinary chain fast food and transform it into something fancy. But this time, for our 50th post, we're going to go beyond the realms of McDonald's, Burger King, and Pizza Hut and go into outer space. Sort of. Hi, I'm Eric Trinidad. Now that the manned space program is going on hiatus, what are we going to do with all this extra space food? I'm actually here in Greenbelt, Maryland, home of NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, where I've been invited by some folks at NASA to see what they do here and to play around with some leftovers they had sent up from the Johnson Space Center in Houston. Let's go check it out. So we all think we know about space food. I mean, who hasn't enjoyed the astronaut ice cream you can get at the gift shop in a science museum? I learned all about this freeze-dried treat, along with a bunch of other things, as I was invited to tour all around the NASA campus. Check it out, it's Uranus. On my tour, I met some of the folks who work at NASA. You know, total space nerds. Nerds like Edward Chung, who makes robots to go up into outer space and sort of scope out the area while astronauts are grounded for the time being. We're doing all kinds of work with robots. I love robots. <laughs> yeah, they are fun to work with. Do you uh, secretly make transformers here? Uh, it's a secret. Robots, scout I out. heard, are the future. Yeah, absolutely, I think, because we have to scout things out so that we make it all safe and wonderful for our astronauts to come and, and check it out right. first. And yeah. robots don't require food. Uh, well, some of them, right? Because yeah. like Commander Data did eat on right. Star Trek. Right, that's so true. He, you know. Uh, who do you think ate better, the crew of the Enterprise or the crew of the Battlestar Galactica? That's a hard one, since I've never actually watched Battlestar Galactica. Wow. Oh, I'm a terrible nerd, wow. aren't I? Wow. It's awful. But not everyone was such a bad nerd. For example, there was Leon Bailey, who runs NASA's big cleaning room. A cleaning room is an area that is held primarily free of all contaminants, uh, any dust, small particles, uh -huh. uh, wood, paper products, things like this. So you can prepare food there. Or robots. You could prepare food there, also robotics, yes. yes. If you'll step right this way, I'd be happy to show you. Uh, okay, um, do we have to put on like contamination suit? Oh, we would have to put on a contamination suit, like a bunny suit? A bunny suit, yes. Uh, that's funny because I actually brought a bunny suit. You did? Yes. Not that kind of bunny suit. But enough about robots and clean rooms. I was at NASA to talk about space food, like the astronaut ice cream, which I discovered isn't even flown into outer space when I sat down with Paul Richards, an actual astronaut. The uh, stuff you buy in the gift shop, that uh, ice cream. Yeah, uh, space yeah. Ice, that's, that's, I love uh, space ice cream. Yeah, that's not, we don't buy that. Uh, so that's, why, why is that? It tastes like chalk. <laughs> yeah. it, I always thought they tasted like Lucky Charms marshmallows. Yeah. They taste yeah. like, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, like yeah I've never seen that uh, flown, uh, at least when I was there, it wasn't an option. Your taste buds actually change in space, so sometimes the food that you test um, on the ground that you like, you don't have an affinity for in orbit, and sometimes, you know, something that you might try somebody else's food that uh -huh. you really didn't care for on the ground, and it tastes pretty good. Uh, because your body goes through a lot of changes uh, in orbit and taste right. buds, the taste wow. uh, sort of changes a bit. Since astronaut ice cream wasn't actually served in space, I had to get a hold of some real space food. Fortunately, I met with Sarah Mitchell, who had organized to get me some official NASA food to play with. Right, so uh, since we don't do space food here at Goddard, we contacted the folks down at Johnson Space Center. In, and they in were, Houston. Mm -hmm, and okay. they were kind enough to, to send you an assortment of things to play with. Right. It becomes an English and Russian mm -hmm. for the cosmonauts. Right, yes. since they go up there on the ISS and share their space with the Russians. We have asparagus. We have a vegetable quiche. Okay. We have chipotle snack bread, which has no relation to the fast food place. <laughs> And then, surprisingly enough, they have chicken of the sea in space. Which is it's interesting to see. They have a combination of things they've made and, and also some things that they apparently just source commercially. Um, and there, there's no Russian on this because nobody makes chicken of the sea like the USA. Okay, what I'm going to do with these ingredients is try to make a, a souffle, which uh, will have salmon because this is salmon. It's not tuna. Uh, it'll be the salmon souffle. That's, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Preparing the space food wasn't too hard. You just add water and let it hydrate for a bit. 
like a cup of instant ramen noodles. The trick was to make it fancy, or at least make it look fancy, regardless of how it tastes. Okay, so let's try this thing. Okay, let's see. Edible. I don't think it's that bad. It's okay. We're stuck in space, I suppose I'd eat it. Maybe it's only intended to be eaten in space, because I remember the astronaut was saying his taste buds changed in space. Maybe. There should be a room that we can uh, probably simulate this in, maybe? We'll see what we can do. Cool. You're right, it does taste better in a simulated space environment. I just wish there was more than one spacesuit. 